they are underdogs. The Filipinos have been the most successful nation in the history of the World Cup of Pool. The only surprise for me is that they're seeded for this event 10th. Great Britain B. Yeah, it's not lag. often you would associate the number 10 with a, a seed in the Philippines. They are pretty much a powerhouse of our sport. On the left there is Jeffrey De Luna with his massive break and his energetic antics. On the right, the more serious Roberto Gomez. Yeah, both of the, these players have actually been to a final of a uh, World Cup at all, obviously not together. So they, they know how to go deep in the event, but they've, they've been thrown together this year so we're going to see how they're going to get on and it's a tricky opening tie for the guys from the philippines <laughs> this has been the the match i've been most looking forward to phil i can't wait for this one rack number one great britain b to break john layman the referee announces the start of the match and i'm with you carl this is the one that's captivated me when i saw the draw Kelly Fisher's breaking in the first. It wasn't that long ago. She was playing in the Predator Championship League pool and she played very well there and held her own, winning a lot of matches, advancing through the days. So the first break's a dry break. If you push, you come back to the table. Push out. So the Filipinos want to push out and will do so. They were just asking who gets to play Great Britain B, the option? next shot if they're put back in, which would be Jeffrey De Luna. The Duchess of Doom is back on our screens. And her first shot is going to be a jump shot. <laughs> Alison Fisher always delivers opening shot straight over the eight ball. Pockets the one. Is that an omen, I wonder? Are they going to fire? Yeah, and that's also a brilliant shot. It's not easy when you've got them long ones early on and you, you've not had many shots on the table and Kelly's such a fantastic potter of the ball. Well, because of their snooker background, they've got terrific techniques. Bear in mind, Alison Fisher had a high break of 1-4-4. This is a tricky little shot because she's got to try and get from this pink four to the five and there's a couple of balls. She tries to just pull the cue ball back and as she managed to get past that eight ball. It's obviously tight because they're having a good look. Maybe she can spin it in. Maybe she can, she's got to play it with right hand spin anyway to get back over for that green six. Extension, please. This is quite good though. This in this format because if you're not sure, you can ask your partner. Look at the cue action of Alison Fisher. Yeah, she didn't take too many risks there. She just concentrated on potting the ball and just to try and give Kelly a shot at this six. Great 
great shot from Kelly. A little bit unlucky just to land there with a the cue ball. Anywhere but there, and the rack would be theirs. Still fancy to get this, though. Mm, I was incorrect. What a shame. Yeah, it had been such a good rack up until that point, and it was a little bit unfortunate where the cue ball stopped. It just, it just made the shot a lot more difficult. And the Filipinos just tidying up, relieved. That's their prevailing emotion. Never seems to come easy, Phil, if the cue ball would have stopped just before the eight or run past the eight, it should have been fine, but it always seems to land in that funny little spot. Gomez wasn't going to miss that, though, and so first blood is drawn by the Filipinos. It really was an unfortunate positional shot that cost Great Britain the... Now, how's this call, you know? On the left there, Alison Fisher. On the right, Kelly Fisher. Before them, Mandy Fisher also won the Women's World Snooker Championship. None of them are from the same part of the UK. None of them related. One of the chances, three women called Fisher going to the top of the snooker world. Yeah, that's an incredible story, to be fair. I mean, to think they're not related and they all played snooker is well, it's unbelievable. The first rack looked like falling to Great Britain V. It was awkward queuing, and she just caught it slightly too thick, did Alison? Yeah, Alison's in a she's in a similar kind of boat to where I'm at. She doesn't really play and she's got the cue back out and you know it's it was a tricky shot. They did well to to get that far, let's not forget. She played a wonderful jump shot, but it's just it's it kind of put a dint in your confidence, doesn't it? Even though it's a a tough shot, it just doesn't do you any favours. This was the opening jump shot. It went in as clean as a whistle. Elevation over the eight ball. It's your first break, yes. Found nothing but pocket. Rack number two. Our current score is one to zero in favor of the Philippines. Now, Jeffrey De Luna. Philippines to break. Well, he's, he's got the hardest break in pool, but I'm not sure if he's going to go full speed in his, in his first break, but let's just see. Well, he did. It's a shame we don't have a speed gun because he doesn't have him a good old wallop, does Jeffrey? But it's dry and they've got a shot of the one ball. Well, his nickname is the Bull, and there he was a bull in a china shop. Stuff going everywhere. When you do that and you you come up dry. It must be so frustrating. Yeah, so this is a chance. The the tricky ball. Well, it's going to kind of be the pink four, isn't it? Where that where that ball is. Looks like they're going to have to try and play it up into the the same pocket that this blue two ball is going to go. Has she got an angle? Can she get over? Looks to have landed a little bit awkward, this. I think the opening shot that Kelly played, she just probably didn't give it enough attention because she left Alison a little bit too much angle. Extension, please. 
Yes, there was a wry smile on Alison Fisher's face when she realised the, the position she was in, or the non-position she was in. Yeah, I don't think she can play this with Tot. Kind of miss the six and come off the rail, so... Well, Alison's looking at the potting angle, so... That does surprise me, so maybe this ball goes. If it does go, it's not clean. She can also play safe and just try and... Well, it doesn't go, so she's just going to be playing safe, just ducking the cue ball in behind the purple five. Yeah, that's not bad, that. Well done. Good shot. Thing is, when your opponents come back to the table and they're kicking, you never quite know what's going to happen. And the pool players from the Philippines... The famous for their kicking abilities. Efren Reyes, probably the most famous man in our sport. He kind of made that famous, but Foul. he's kicked the wrong ball in. So the safety shot from the Fishers has paid off. And now from here, after this error, just got that thin edge of the eight ball. Now from here with ball in hand, Great Britain B really should clear up. Yeah, this shot's a tiny bit similar to the one she missed, but without the uh, the cue ball impending her queuing. So you can see here how, how much easier this shot is without bridging over the ball. Many people, Phil, have got Philippines favourite in this match, but I'm not convinced. I think, you know, when you're playing pool on TV, it's all about cue action and trying to make sure you don't miss silly balls and and take your chances in these race to sevens. The bookmaker's odds, one to six, Philippines, seven to two, GBB. I thought the seven to two was the value. Yeah, 100%. I'm sure there's been a... A few flutters on the ladies. Fisher and Fisher are back on level terms. They made a good start here. Yeah, what a really entertaining start. So it's one rack all. Um, Albin Ocean's with me. Albin. Really, it could be 2-0 to Great Britain Bay at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, w what a start that was. I think the Filipinos never thought that uh, they would take on the jump shot, but Alison, yeah, it was incredible. Incredible start. She, she made the jump shot, then uh, Kelly made a tough two ball, but a little mistake on a seven ball, but they came back even stronger in rec two. You can do all the practice in the world, but is it the early nerves when you're on the main table? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a little bit of a flip of a coin uh, in, in the beginning if you have a good start or a rough start. But uh, I definitely think they are ready to, to fight here. They look relaxed, don't they? Which is a yeah. good sign. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're having fun. Yeah. They, they got nothing to lose, so they are ready. And when you have fun in life, you never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, and true. Let's, let's go back to the game. It's, it's one record. I think a really salient point here, Carl, is the fact that Kelly Fisher and Alison Fisher have spent their life in front of the TV cameras playing big pool matches. It's not an alien environment for them. Round Unlike three, most of the underdogs, one game apiece. they feel right at home. Great Britain B to break. Yeah, and I think that's the value in the in the price that you said, Phil. Exactly correct. They played in these TV arenas all over the world for many years, and you just can't buy that experience. If one thing that might kind of let them down a little bit you would say it's going to be the break shot but the table's not been breaking easy this week that's one thing we have noticed the balls have been coming out tricky so the boys look like they've got a combo here playing the yellow one onto the blue two to stay at the table if you're new to pool as long as you hit the lowest ball on the table Pretty much anything goes. It's 
so they've missed it and the one's gone over the pocket now I know both of these guys have been to the finals but I think it's a fair point to say they got to the finals with more experienced players you know the, the, the type of players who've won the big championships Gomez lost in the final in 2010 with Dennis Orcolo well that was a bad miss Phil it was and look at the outcome when you miss a ball like that you don't deserve to see the object ball roll in behind another but there you can see it's nestling behind the eight yeah Kelly was just trying to pinch a little bit of the pocket to get that angle and kind of just took her eye off the pot a little bit but she can forget about that one such a great potter extension please they call for the extension with a second left. Yeah, Roberto's going to try and pot this yellow one ball in the left centre. Might even go off the eight. Yeah, he hit it a little bit too full, so it didn't go. I think he thought the cue ball was going to fall, but it didn't, so... Of a safety battle going to go on. Yeah, Jeffrey De Luna was partnering Carlo Biardo last time out in 2019. They lost to Team Austria. Yeah, good shot there from Allison using the seven as a blocker. Jeffrey goes and gets the jump cue, so he's trying to jump this into the side. Well, again, look plays a part both teams in this rack receiving it yeah it's definitely the girls who've got the advantage so if they, they're just a, a good safety shot away from carving out a great opportunity Kelly's a very attacking player though so she might have a go at this one into the corner she's had a go that's a lot better. She needs a good nudge, though, and it's not quite gone right. A little bit unfortunate there. It was a great pot. Surviving all of those groups in the Championship League must have given Kelly a lot of confidence. And also, all of that match time was invaluable. Extension. Extension, please. Yeah, she's just got to be careful. She needs to miss the green six with a little bit of spin and try and get the cue ball down on that bottom rail and use the nine and the brown seven as a blocker. It's bounced off pretty big off the first rail, but it's not too bad. I think the two goes, but the cue ball's on the rail. He's not guaranteed position. There's no disguising the fact that the Filipinos don't just look edgy, they are edgy. Yeah, I've said it before, you know, no disrespect to the guys, the phenomenal pool players, but you can't, you know, you can't buy that experience of winning a big major event, especially a matchroom event. I think a, a key tactic for the ladies would be, even if you don't get a good safety, I would definitely focus on getting good distance.
So Kelly's got a good safety there. Jeffrey's kicking one rail. Two ball might go near the top corner. Yeah, he's hit that pretty good. That's what he was intending to do. Get the two ball up towards the top and keep the cue ball down here. So well executed. Yeah, she's in a tricky spot here now. It's not easy to get a good hit on this ball and you see it many times if she if she was to try and go two rails, she's gotta miss the eight and if she hits just behind the two, she can scratch in the top right corner. Well, good news, bad news. Good news, she hit the ball. Bad news, she's left the Philippines straight in. Hampered queuing over the nine, that limits these positional options. Severely limits them. Yeah, he didn't really have a choice but to leave his partner a bank shot. Nice bank shot from Roberto. He's left his partner. A little cut back. He's to avoid the seven ball. Yeah, he's done a good job there. That's Jeffrey. taking every precaution, doesn't want the eight ball to jump back out because of all ready balls being in the pocket. The Philippines won the opener. GB, B-side, retaliated. Now the Filipinos are back in front. It's 2-1. Yeah. Oh, 
Ah, mais... The early indications are that we're watching a match which will be keenly contested. No real clues as to how it will turn out. I think both teams have made a reasonable start, although for me, even though they're behind, Great Britain B look the, the calmer of the two sides. Roberto Gomez also possesses a very good break. He's got quite an unusual action when he pulls the cue back. He kind of lifts his back arm up towards the sky, so. Yeah, that's a nice break. This will work. Well, that's one of the most effective breaks of the entire tournament so far. Crunch. And you're absolutely right, Carl. That's the one massive disparity between these two sides. The, the strength of their break-off. The power imparted. shot there from Gomez had to play the bank shot and he's got nice position on the three ball well he just grazed the green six ball but it was perfectly okay he's a cue ball to slow down though because Anywhere low would have been perfect to know. It's not too bad if he can still draw back, but that's not where he played it. Yeah, and he was all right. <coughs> Extension. Extension, please. Extension called. It's a 30 second shot clock with one 30 second extension allowed. Per team per rack. Mm. Not the smoothest key action. Apart from that, know, that okay. rack was it, the so. Filipinos at their best. But thank you. Yeah, apart from that, yeah, absolutely. The Philippines showing their class in that rack. You know I'd say Chris Melling from Great Britain A uh, is with me. Chris didn't have it all their own way to start with the Philippines. Maybe slightly fortunate. Yeah, Great Britain started great, to be honest. Alison making that jump shot and then Kelly putting a great two ball. And they've been slightly unfortunate. The Philippines made a couple of mistakes but got away with it. But, you know, since, since they're going two in front, they're... They're playing well at the minute. Is that the concern now? They're sort of starting to show their class. The signs are there. Yeah, I think if the break goes their way, I mean, they've got such a powerful break and the safety game's so good. Potting-wise, there's nothing in it between them all. Um, but they've definitely got the edge with the break and the kicking. I think everyone was really looking forward to seeing this match. I mean, 
everyone, all the teams part are, are actually watching this behind. And you, you, you yourself. Yeah, because it's such an exciting game and, you know, the, the women are great players, you know, you don't want to be playing them. Uh, they put you under a lot of pressure and they don't miss many pots. Yeah, it's, it's great to see them out there and they look quite calm as well. I don't know, here there is a shot of them here. Yeah, obviously they're both there, you know, they've both been world snooker champions and great temperaments, great players and they know how to win. It's great to see them here, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome and uh, I hope they win this match. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Philippines are strong favourites, but they've certainly not had it all their own way yet. No, there's a long way to go. Obviously, winner breaks, it's, uh, it's anybody still, and every one of them players can run five and six racks, so uh, don't count them out is, yet. Is that the unforgiving part here, the winner breaks, and it's first to seven? It's very unforgiving, isn't it? Yeah, when you get to this kind of class, then uh, you might not get a shot. Chris, stay with me here. Looking forward to talking to you a bit more. For now, let's go back to the commentary team. And you come back to five, Jeffrey De Luna's three to electric break. In favour of Philippines. Philippines to break. Yeah, he actually took a lot off that this time, did throw his full body into it, and I think that was maybe because the first one was dry, but it's not something that you can perfect the break. Sometimes balls go in and sometimes they don't. But Great Britain B have no shot here, so it's quite a fortunate leave. Yeah, that was restrained by his standards. So two breaks from Deluna. Two have come up dry and this is going to be a messy rack. Yeah, it's a tricky little push out as well. Where do you push to? Because you've got to bear in mind that you could be playing the shot from where you push to. Push out. Yeah, so they've pushed over to the right side of the table now. Your option, players. You could just hear Jeffrey say, can you make the bank shot? So is he trying to bank the one ball into the corner pocket where he stood? That's what he tried and he failed, was easy, and now the ladies are at the table with an open look at the table. But quick glance, the green six is going to be a problem ball. But they're at the table. Few actions has changed ever, Phil, has it? It's always been really beautifully grooved. She was coached early in life by a man from your part of the world, Frank Callan, who's recognised as one of the greatest snooker coaches of all time, and the principles he instilled remain there today. He was a fishmonger, wasn't he, from Fleetwood, Frank. Great character. Of course, Frank was mentioned Thank you, recently when, very sadly, Doug Mountjoy, the Welsh snooker player, passed away. It was Frank who resurrected Doug's game and enabled Doug to win the UK Championship in 1988 at the age of 46. didn't quite get into that as much as she would have liked and 
Kelly doesn't have a pot at this five ball, so. Need to try and find a good safety. The thing is, they're, they're so aware that the Filipinos are, have got so much pool knowledge. They know that it needs to be a good safety. It's not the worst result. It's not the best safety shot she's ever played. But what she has done is she's knocked the black eight ball on top of the seven. So that's a bit of insurance for later on. Lovely shot there to play that with extreme right and spin to get the cue ball spinning behind the two balls. I also go close to potting this though. Not quite over the pocket, but it's near. That's not bad, she's not scratched, and where that six ball is, this is always going to be. It's a tricky little table, this, because there's one ball in the open, which is the ball they're on, and the other four balls are all tied up. Yeah, after the break, it was immediately obvious, wasn't it, that this rack was not going to be orthodox in any way. Another phenomenal safety shot. And in playing the safety shot, he's knocked the six ball out. So that's a Brucey bonus. Yeah, the magicians from Manila. Their tactical shrewdness is off the charts. Well, they play that shot just in the nick of time. <laughs> And not very well. <laughs> yeah, oh, and they've no knocked contact. the eight and the seven out. That was an insurance policy, so kind of lost the plot there on that shot, didn't they? This is great to see, though. Yeah, she's missed a big trick there. She could have played a deliberate foul and just tried to tie the six up towards the nine, knowing that the seven and the eight is dead, so... At least they're laughing about it. Yeah, it was the worst of all worlds, that the worst possible scenario. I think, you know, they actually forgot about the shot clock. It happens. It really does. I think when you play the Filipinos, you can get a little bit lost with the creativity that that they show and you try and get involved in it where sometimes you need to just step back and, you know, look at the table and play the percentages. It was such a tough shot to hit. This distance, and knowing Jeffrey De Luna's key action, I'm not saying this is in for certain. Oh, well done! Well done indeed. He knocked that in much more easily than a, a very simple nine ball earlier in the match. The Philippines now getting into control, they lead by four racks to one. We saw there, Carl, you know, evidence of the Filipinos and their tactical game. If you've got some money burning a hole in your pocket, the best way to get rid of it is to go into any pool hall in the Philippines and play for cash. Yeah, we've been over to the Philippines many years and 
like even the, the cleaner in the, the pool rooms who doesn't play pool, they can play pool, everyone can play pool in the Philippines. It's a, it's a sight for sore eyes. I'll tell you what though, when you can queue like Alison Fisher, you can play any queue sports. It's a delight to watch the the queue action. It really is. This was just a, a safety, but she takes care on everything. She's got the discipline, the the focus and the routine. Now this is just a routine shot, but look at the way the cue is delivered. So straight, so functional. And this is why she's won, unbelievably, 50 titles on the Women's Professional Billiards Association Tour. <laughs> The amount of times I've vacationed in the States in the 90s and early 2000s and you turn on the TV and there she the is playing in a final. Philippines to break. So the last time Gomez broke, it was a beauty. So let's see if he can replicate. Well, he did lose the cue ball. He, it was tracking towards the side and didn't go in. And the ball has fell in, and they do have a shot at this one ball. Looks like the shot in this rack is going to be all about the three. There you see it tying up with the pink four. It does go in the bottom right corner though, but it's a tricky shot and. There's a bit of a, a word around the arena at the table. He's very lively off the rails, so whenever you've got that feeling, it's not easy to judge. There you see, look at this. Completely lost the cue ball. I mean, it wasn't an easy shot, but he felt that was a little bit more bouncy than he would have liked. This isn't going to work. It's going to bounce out and leave him a pot. He's, he's, he's about six inches short of where he should have been there. So this is a chance and... The girls have got to take this chance now when... You know, we've seen some fantastic safety shots and when they play a loose one, you do have to punish. Awkward queuing. A bit too much side has thrown the three ball onto the top jaw. And that's a shame, it was a chance. It wasn't easy. Yeah, it was such an encouraging start, wasn't it? But now you you sense that the, the match is unravelling. The Great Britain V team. Side on that. I think the players can cope with springy cushions. It's when they're inconsistently springy. Time and again, though, at these tournaments, these rats on tables provide wonderful conditions, don't they? That's prime location now, so this rack looks like it's over. That was as straightforward as you like once. Great Britain B had made the mistake. The Filipinos pounced 5-1.
with a winner breaks format, this deficit can be overturned by Great Britain B, but they've got to improve their break off to do that. Look at it. Balls made on the break, zero. Mind you, the Filipinos have only had one break and run out. That came in the, the fourth rack. Other than that, most of the, the game has been pretty evenly matched. I think 5-1, Carl, is a flattering scoreline for the Filipinos. Right. Number seven. Yeah, I think the only thing you can separate is one. just the fact that in favor of the ladies have just missed a couple of key balls. Allison missed that seven in the opener. And then Kelly missed a, well, it was a tricky three ball, but, you know, if they make both for theirs, we could be sat at a 3-3, three, three, and that is all the difference is, really. Now we've seen a super hard break and a soft break. What's Jeffrey going to do this time? Ball power. And this time he makes a ball. Yes, the, the purple five went into the middle. Yeah, when Jeffrey breaks, he actually jumps up off the floor. This is a thin one into the side pocket. Needs the cue ball to miss the eight. It's a good shot. Look fast on the way down here, that cue ball. Thought it was going to stop a lot further up the table. Yeah, on fast greens, the golfers say that it's like putting on a, a marble staircase. into stride now, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's the easiest game in the world when a set is going your way, the 5-1 up. Not far off the winning line. Mindful not to drape his clothing over that seven ball. And because he didn't want to dip, he actually dug into the cue ball and now out of position. I think ambidextrous Jeffrey De Luna, or at least thinking of it. Yeah, this is a thin one and when you swap hands, even though he might be pretty good, he's not played many shots. The cue ball's close to the scratch. It's foul. Well, it's all gone wrong, and this has given I got you. Thank you. Team GB a Jeff. little bit of hope. Because they would have thought they were about to get on the hill there, the Filipinos, so mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of life left in this match. It's a foul. I can't quite believe that the seven ball actually reached the pocket. I've given up on that. I was watching the white. Great Britain B not giving up on this. 5 2. Nowhere. We thought the Philippines would be on the hill, but Great Britain have found a way back. From, uh, from
from the Philippines and they had a good chance to get on the hill and that might hurt them because England could win, or oh, should I say Great Britain could win a few games a year in a row and it could put them under great pressure. And obviously this tournament, they will break in this next rack, so that's key. Yeah, and looking at it from an outside point of view, the Philippines, every time they seem to break and make a ball, they've got a clear shot. If we notice a few of the racks, when they haven't made a ball, you know, Great Britain haven't got a shot, so... It looked like the Philippines were really starting to show their class. It was looking ominous for Great Britain B. But this is the beauty of this tournament. All of a sudden, there's some hope. Yeah, they're never out of it, obviously. Like I said earlier, with winner breaks, you, you've always got a chance, and these two can certainly run racks. You're playing tonight, Belarus. Does it give you further excitement watching all this? Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a decent crowd in, and uh, <laughs> it's exciting. You know, it's nice to get a few people back watching, and me and Jason thrive on the crowd, so uh, we can't wait. Yeah, and it's been, they've been very animated as well. Great bits of play from both teams, with, with loads of applause going on as well. Um, Philippines, would you still predict them to get the get over the line in the end? Yeah, you've got to favour the Philippines simply because of the break, you know. Great Britain don't break as good as them and the wing ball isn't going in every break so it's not to their advantage. Cheers Chris, 5-2, let's go back to the game. Britain B to break. Okay then, here we go, can the comeback be sustained? Yeah, you can notch that one down again. It's another dry break. When you do uh, have a dry break, you know, as players, you start watching the balls and you're just praying that they don't have a shot on the one. And even though Jeffrey can see this one, does it pass the four ball? I think it's tight because he's up and down, looking at the angle. Although you see, he has not got a lot of pocket to work with there. was asking an awful lot it was like threading a needle from a helicopter yeah it wasn't easy you had to play it off the jaw and often when you play that shot and you miss it the balls fly on the table and it can make you look a little bit silly but it was so tight and there's a small chance here this is not easy by any stretch but there is a possible combo and there you see the Duchess of Doom she's lining this one up of course, if you hit the lowest ball and pot the nine, you win the rack. This is not easy. He's a good cue ball. She might be the Duchess of Gloom after that one. You've been waiting for that one, haven't you, <laughs> Get the Duchess of Zoom in there somewhere, given the current circumstances. Extension. Extension, please. So is Roberto playing this in the top? For years, he's got to draw it off two rails and back out. This is not easy as well. Oh, so he tried to just find that gap in between the side and the five, and that's not bad. Well, good shot, that. Another nice shot there from Jeffrey, had to find the gap near the side pocket to get out for this three ball. This is a genuine chance now after the first two opening shots from the Philippines. The balls are sitting pretty. Wasn't an easy combo that Allison was faced with.
shelling peas. Roberto just has a little smile there because I think he's left his partner a little bit straight for no reason. So the cue ball is close to the rail. I mean, you're asking a lot, but you never know. There was a little more stress on that shot than the might otherwise have been had the cue ball not gone so close to that side cushion. Now, though, the Filipinos find themselves on the hill. They lead 6-2. One of the big facets of this now very useful lead is the fact that the Filipinos, Carl, break off in a superior fashion to the opposition. Yeah, there you see Jeffrey, the whole body comes off the floor, he throws everything into it. It is a sight for sore eyes, isn't it? And that's what gives him the most powerful break in pool. Has he got the most powerful break you've ever seen from anyone? Yeah, I think it's been recorded as well. I'm not certain on the actual miles an hour, but it has been done and all about technique and I'm not saying you always need to hit it at full speed, but it does look nice when it comes off. The ladies have got it all to do, Phil. The trail in this match and there's no way back. <laughs> yeah, five racks left. They have to win them all. It's not an impossibility. Six to two. But it's highly improbable. Philippines, Philippines to break on the hill. Tell you what, that brown seven ball was one of the last balls rolling, and it just about toppled into the middle. Yeah, they can see the one ball, obviously, but that green six where it's placed doesn't pass the eight ball, so that's that's a big problem. The five ball is not in a bad position to maybe knock it out later on. Ball's going to go in the side here. He's played it all wrong. Foul. So we're going to get to see the Fishers back at the table. Well, they won the seventh rack as a direct result of Jeffrey DeLuna scratching on the seven. Can they retrieve this one? This table is lively. The players that have played on it so far, they're saying the rails are very bouncy and sometimes pool tables, depending on the weather or the room that the table's in, it can sometimes be a little bit like that and it can make you a little bit edgy.
so Kelly needs an angle here because she's got to get into them two balls. She's either going to bump into the eight or into the six. Well, well, she can play for the pot, so there's a gap in between. So that looks okay. Cue ball's going to be travelling all the way up the table. But, well, is there a gap? Looked very tight, didn't it? First of all, you've got to pot the ball, and then this is not easy to judge because the cue ball's bouncing. Look at this bounce. This is bouncing away. Well, the bounce off the bottom cushion was so violent, wasn't it? Absolutely terrific potting. And again, the bounce off that bottom cushion. Wow. Off the scale. GB remain alive. The B team now trailing 6-3. Welcome back to Stadium MK in Milton Keynes and the 2021 World Cup half pool. The Filipinos are on the hill, but in the last rack, 
This British pairing showed they're not over the hill. Yeah, that's the thing that we've been talking about. And Chris Mellon in the studio even mentioned it. It's the power on the brake, something that certainly Alison Fisher just doesn't quite have that same power that the Filipinos possess. But she gave a little cheer as the seven ball went in. So this is half a chance. Not easy, full length of the table. Needs this cue ball to bounce safe, and that will do. Missed it on the pro side, as we call it. That's when you miss it thin. This has gone wrong. Is it that way too fat? Now, does the one ball pass the six? If not, she's got to play a tricky combination onto the six. And there you see a cue, so she's lining up another combo. Just got to focus on making this six. Position looks pretty much guaranteed. And she has done, so nice shot, Wilson. Two ball is jammed over this left corner pocket. This is tricky. How does she get on this three ball? Yes. Kelly just told her partner that she thinks it goes. If so, Alison needs to try and get a straight on it because whenever it's Extension. tight. Extension, please. It's awkward. The way Alison was queuing up there, it looked like she was going to play a deep screw back or draw, as you call it in America. And it's gone wrong. Didn't get any zip on the cue ball. Yes, that was a really dead reaction, wasn't it? It's unlucky that she played a pretty good kick shot. She purposely played to hit the three low and the three balls come back over over this corner and this is a it's a big chance now for the match. This top rail is bouncing a little bit, so you've got to be a little bit careful. The end could be nigh. The end really should be nigh. Extension. Extension, please. Using their extension quite sensibly. Remember, the winners go through to face either Australia or USA. What a section of the draw this is. Yeah, good shot from Jeffrey there. That pretty much seals the deal in this match. Be nice to see both fishers in this tournament though they've played with smiles on their faces
that was enjoyable. The Fisher Queens had their moments, but in the end, they were dethroned. The Filipinos, three times winners of this World Cup of Pool, come through in the first round on this occasion by seven racks to three.